what kind of a threat do you think you are to the oil and gas industry? Well, I don't think we're much of a threat, I mean, yet, you know, yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the, 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 the more obvious threat is that we're going to run out of uh, hydrocarbons to mine and burn. And r really, we're just arguing about the when uh, hydrocarbons run out or become prohibitively expensive. Have you been considering purchasing an electric vehicle? If you don't own one already, it's actually a lot cheaper than you might think. And for those of you watching that do own an electric vehicle already, you may learn a few things when considering other options in this space. In an interview with the New York Times, Alistair Weaver, editor-in-chief at Edmunds, an online resource for automotive inventory and information, stated that there's a real explosion in choice. Everybody, and I mean everybody, is piling into the market. The tipping point has been reached where all your familiar brands will now be offering genuinely useful, versatile EV alternatives within the next two or three years. Now you might be wondering what the statistic is for people actually interested in purchasing an EV. A study conducted by Consumer Reports estimated around 71% of people would consider an EV at some point, and just over 30% saying it would most likely be their next vehicle. Simply put, electric vehicles are cheaper to own. A recent Consumer Reports study also found that the average electric vehicle driver will spend 60% less to power the car, truck or SUV, and half as much on repairs and maintenance. No oil change is required and when it's compared to the average owner of a gas-powered vehicle. So why aren't more people jumping on the bandwagon yet? There's a simple answer, and it involves three key reasons why people are holding off on buying an electric vehicle for now. Number one is battery safety and the cost to maintain and replace. Number two, driving range, charge time, and available charging infrastructure. And finally, number three, pricing and incentives, both on new and used vehicles. Let's dive into battery safety, since this is the most important reason considering safety is always the number one priority. Many articles have come out over the past several years about accidents involving Tesla battery fires and how dangerous and difficult they are to put out. So how can the new EV companies mitigate these risks and give their owners confidence when driving? Well, for starters, the lithium ion batteries are dangerous when exposed to blunt forces and other forms of impact. As we mentioned in our previous episode, the graphene battery pouch could replace the lithium ion cell and is perhaps the top choice for a solution. The technology is very new, however, so only time and additional funds towards research and development will help determine if this becomes the next disruption in the electric vehicle space. Another factor that holds people back is a notion that a replacement battery will cost them an arm and a leg when it becomes defective, but the reality of this statement is that most electric vehicle companies provide an 8-year and 100,000 plus mile warranty some as high as 175,000 in the case of Rivian. Considering most of us never drive more than 15,000 miles a year unless you're an Uber or taxi cab service, there should be at least six to seven years of ownership with very minimal repair costs. As for driving range, the charge time of the battery and available charging stations and infrastructure these are some of the big reasons why people are hesitant towards switching over to electric. Most drivers are used to getting an average of 400 plus miles in their vehicles, and most electric vehicles average just over 200 miles with the more expensive long-range options reaching over 350 to 400 miles. That's not the only concern when we discuss range. People are also concerned with the time it takes to charge the vehicle either at home or at the charging stations. The average time for a gas fill-up is around 5 minutes, while EV owners are waiting an average of 25 to 30 minutes at chargers. Although the newer Tesla cars and other EV manufacturers are keen on dropping that below 15 minutes, there's still an inconvenience factor. The gap between charging stations available and the existing electric vehicle fleet continues to grow. Tesla and other EV producers have released hundreds of thousands of cars onto the road and yet haven't built enough charging infrastructure to supplement this change. In order to give potential EV buyers more confidence with their purchase, there needs to be more consideration towards these factors. Pricing and incentives on both new and used electric vehicles is another way people determine if they'll make the switch or not. The average price of a new electric vehicle is around $56,000 currently, about $10,000 over the average hybrid or gas car. But here's the catch. There are also two factors to consider here. 
Number one, you get a tax incentive for purchasing most of the new electric vehicles, upwards of $7,500 back in your pocket. Deduct this from the cost of your vehicle when purchasing, so a $56,000 electric car only costs $48,500 after deduction. This does exclude a manufacturer with over 200,000 electric vehicles produced like Tesla or GM. Number two, in the case of used Tesla vehicles, most of the cars are actually selling for more money than their original purchase price. Think about that for one second. Our current market has actually deemed a used Tesla Model 3 to be worth more than when it was purchased. Believe it or not, we've seen used Tesla vehicles selling on average almost $10,000 higher than their original purchase price. But why? Other than adjusting for inflation, it's because the demand is so high currently and wait times for newer models are expected to be as far out as August of this year. People trying to rush into the EV space now aren't necessarily going to wait the four to six months that it will take to get a new Model 3. Remember this, as we stated before, it's about 60% less in fuel costs and half the cost to repair and maintain. The lifetime maintenance and repair costs on electric vehicles averages out to $4,600, while gas cars average $9,200. That's a difference of $4,600 in savings. The study we reference used 200,000 miles to represent the normal service life of an automobile. Based on that, its analysis of the total vehicle mileage had cost estimates divided into three categories, the 0 to 50,000, 50,000 to 100,000, and 100,000 to 200,000 miles. In addition to that, a cost breakdown of the average savings on fueling up an electric versus gas car comes out to around $4,300. With gas prices surging even higher into the new year, those figures could be even higher. According to Tesla, this amount was taken into consideration before purchasing their vehicles. What does this mean for you, the buyer? In the end, you can save upwards of $8,900 for owning a Tesla or GM electric and up to $16,400 on any other electric vehicle. Now, a $56,000 electric car falls into the range of a $40,000 gas vehicle. That's savings upwards of 30% or more. Again, the warranty on most electric vehicles is an 8-year, 100,000 mile for the main battery pack. Compare this to the average gas vehicle at 3-year, 36,000 miles. Electric cars are almost double with most warranties. Now, many of you may be asking, what about if the battery in an electric vehicle fails after 100,000 miles or is out of warranty? Well, currently there is no data that indicates how many of the newer electric vehicles like a Tesla Model 3 have needed a replacement battery so far after 100,000 miles, but Elon Musk wrote that their batteries were expected to last somewhere between 3 to 500,000 miles before encountering any issues. You can feel confident that your electric vehicle purchase will be worth it further into the future and cost significantly less for maintenance than gas cars. And once your vehicle is off warranty, there will be more independent shops that have emerged in the coming years with reduced costs for repairing your major components like the batteries and powertrain systems instead of an outright replacement at the OEM service centers, which costs way more. We hope you enjoyed this first episode on the Electric Vehicle Buyer's Guide and found this information useful when deciding to switch over to either this disruptive industry or continuing to purchase gas vehicles moving forward. Be sure to give us additional support on our other pages, including TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. This is Max Gruber. Thank you again for watching.